I'm so pumped to see everyone here. Um, I can't even count how many people are in the crowd. And I think to kick things off, there's no better way to do that than to reflect on what's gotten Aeroplo to where it's been so far, so we can talk about where it's going in this panel and some of the other panels. Um, so let's dive in right here. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Elad. Uh, I'm Apache Airflow uh, Committers and PMC. Um, working for Amazon as a data engineer. Uh, been in the project since 2018, I think. Uh, yeah, that's me. I'm John. I'm the principal product manager for Amazon Managed Workflows for Apache Airflow. Uh, I've been working with Airflow for over five years now, and I'm glad to be here. Uh, my name is uh, Rafa Bigac. I'm, I'm working for, for Google, uh, where I uh, work on the product called Cloud Composer, which is a managed service for uh, Airflow. Uh, I have been working with Airflow for the last uh, five, five years. Hi, I'm Ash. Uh, I've been involved in Airflow since 2017 and astronomer since 2019, working mostly on Airflow open source. And hi, I'm uh, Mark Lamberti, and I'm uh, the head of customer education at Astronomer. And uh, I've been uh, creating uh, learning content around Airflow since 2019, I think. Something like that. Awesome. And I'm Viraj Prek. I'm one of the co-founders of Astronomer. I get to work with folks like Ash and Mark every day. And I've been using Airflow since 2016. So I guess I have, I'm, I'm the old man on stage, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but let's dive in here. So fun fact that Airflow as an open source project was originally called Flux. I didn't even know that until we were starting for this panel. Um, and it joined the Apache Incubator in 2016, but it actually started in 2014, hence the 10 years of Airflow theme. Um, Ash, I'd love your perspective on this to start. What do you think the fact that Airflow is open source, um, the fact that it's an open source project, how do you think that contributed to its success? It, it's massive. It's commercial projects grow in a different way. Um, the open source thing, I mean, you get like people like us, engineers, just going, like, oh, I want to use that, and kind of almost getting into the back door in, in big companies. But it definitely started as a kind of all open source projects get their, get, get their groundswell by early adopters and stuff. So yeah, and it's very difficult to do that paid. So it wouldn't exist if it wasn't open source. Yeah. Uh, so, so in addition to that, to, to, to add on top of what Ash has said, I think uh, open source, this is one thing. And the other very important aspect is that Apache Airflow is part of the uh, Apache Software Foundation. Uh, and this is a very strong signal that this uh, uh, project or technology is in, in the hands of community. Uh, Apache Software Foundation also imposes certain processes like uh, voting, controlling the introdu introduction of the, of the changes. Uh, so I think that it's very, very good ecosystem where Airflow actually can flourish. Um, yeah, uh, I think I agree with what you uh, said. Uh, the fact that we're part of the Apache uh, community brings uh, a lot of value uh, to the project, to the dynamic, to how it works. Uh, I think it works really, really well. Um, and you're going to see her great talks about uh, how the project evolved. Yeah, I think at this point, this is one of the most vibrant projects within ASF Foundation. Yeah, the last time I checked, it has more contributors than any other project in the Apache Software Foundation, uh, oh. which kind of speaks to the collaboration that Ash was talking about. Um, but another reason I think it has as many contributors as it does is it's just been around for 10 years. Like, that's such a long time. And I think over that 10-year journey, there's been a lot of pivotal moments in the project's life cycle. Um, so I'd love to go around the panel here and uh, get everyone's opinion on what the most pivotal moment was in Airflow's life cycle. And Rafa, I'll start with you here. There's, there are, of course, like many, uh, many pivotal mom moments, uh, and I think that our, uh, our panelists will mention uh, uh, many of them. From my standpoint, the, uh, the moment when uh, there appeared commercial offerings of managed services for a flow, this was something very important, because it was a signal that there are companies who believe in Airflow and they bet on Airflow, they uh, offered the, the service, managed services to their uh, users to simplify their uh, uh, lives, and in addition to, to, to make also uh, some, some profits. On the other hand, uh, there were users who were actually uh, wanting to buy those uh, services, and maybe in case of enterprises, uh, enterprise uh, uh, users, this is actually a must to have a commercial offering of a service. So for me, this commercial offerings of Airflow, this was something super important. 
Yeah, and I think, I mean, uh, we're actually part of one of the, the, the continuation, one of the big first events, which is the first Airflow Summit back in 2020. We literally started this thing in, in the middle of the pandemic, uh, you know, as a, as a virtual sort of get together. Uh, and then uh, we, we expanded upon that in 2021, still virtual, of course, still pandemic, still hard. We, uh, you know, in 2022, we sort of started testing the waters with getting back together again. We did a little hybrid thing where we had it around the world. And then, of course, last year was the first in-person one we managed to do in Toronto. Uh, had nearly 500 people there, and and uh, you know now we've substantially grown upon that uh, here in San Francisco. So I think that you know that really that first summit really set the tone for how we can get together as a community and improve the project. What do you think? Yeah, for me, it was the creation of the provider packages and the introduction of uh, system tests. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you are aware, but we have a really cool uh, system test around uh, some of our providers, which allows us to actually verify that the code that we're producing actually works uh, with uh, the services. Uh, I think it allowed us to deliver uh, code and features and bug, bug fixes uh, much faster in a faster cadences. Uh, we're trying to release uh, every two weeks, um, we're trying to keep it up. Uh, so I think it uh, allowed us to deliver a much better uh, product to all of you. Yeah. <clears throat> I think the releasing every two weeks is such an underrated fact. Like, it's hard enough to release a product every two weeks as is, let alone a community-led project with thousands of contributors. Um, Mark, I'll hand the question to you. What, what, what's been the most pivotal moment from your perspective? Yeah, I, I don't know if it was like the most pivotal moment for Airflow, but I remember that when I started to use it in 2019, they, like, it was very hard actually to find the learning resource that you need. Um, and so I just basically, um, like when I created the first Udemy courses on Airflow, that was a huge success because many people at that time were actually struggling to find the learning resource to start with Airflow, um, you know, understand the concepts and everything. So I think like, again, I, I don't know if it was a big pivotal moment, but I know that it was uh, definitely um, uh, very helpful for uh, the community to onboard with Airflow and, you know, understand uh, how amazing it is at that time. Well, I can speak on behalf of a lot of us that I don't think the project would have the size that, that it does without your Udemy courses. So I think it was a pivotal moment. Ash, I'll finish with you. Uh, Airflow 2.0 and now 3.0. Certainly 2.0, there was a chance it was never going to happen. Um, and if it didn't, the project very much would have stagnated and we wouldn't be here today. None of us would be. Um, so. The fact that we were willing to, as a project and as a community to, to embrace that and go like, yeah, sometimes we've just got to break things so that we can progress. We try to minimize it, absolutely, but the fact that we, we did that with, with, with 2.0 in, in 2020 and that we're going to do it again with 3.0 next year um, means that we can continue making Airflow better. It continues to be the, the tool that we need. That's a great point. I'm going to ask you a follow-up question. How many cups of coffee do you think you drank during the 2.0 release cycle? <laughs> um, entirely too many. Entirely too many. 3.0 is going to be a different thing. I now have a, like a bean to cup machine at home and my coffee intake is woof. It's like, it's like that contributor graph, but my coffee cups, so. All right, well, I think all of those, there's no wrong answer, right? I think especially for a project that reaches so many people, uh, there's a lot of different perspectives on what the most pivotal moments are. Well, let's talk about some of the challenges, right? 10 years is a long time, and a lot can go wrong over 10 years. Um, Rafa, I'll start with you. Um, what, from your perspective, has been the biggest challenge for Airflow over uh, the last decade? I think that uh, we are introducing uh, quite a number of uh, changes, and maybe for certain users, those changes are a little bit breaking, and maybe they don't uh, like them. Uh, so I think that it, it was in the past a challenge, and probably in case of Airflow 3, it will be also a, a challenge, but we need to, we seek for kind of uh, a balance here. Like we sometimes will need to break to actually provide innovation. On the other hand, wherever uh, it will be possible, we'll try to maintain backward compatibility. So this backward compatibility is something uh, like a challenge for us in general. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree. It's it's. You know, when air, when you get a project like Airflow getting to the size it is, there's a lot of people in this room whose business depends on Airflow working well. 
right? Between one version of the next, one release of the next, one patch of the next. Uh, we have a responsibility as a community to make sure that it's, it's reliable, that it is performant, uh, things like the system tests that were they're done to make sure that every release is, is thoroughly tested um, and, and while still delivering on the improvements like Ash was discussing that that keep the project going and keep it vibrant and keep it exciting and you know that's that's a very challenging balance to strike like you could just simply not add any features and keep it very steady and it would work perfectly fine until everyone left because they were bored or you can continually evolve features and have it to the point where, well, we just don't know how it's gonna behave from one version to the next. So it's a very difficult pattern. And I think the Airflow community and the folks uh, uh, that contribute to it have done a great job in doing that so far. Yeah, I'm, I'm reminded of the, the XKCD comic about spacebar heating. Um, if you haven't, if you're not what I'm sure to just Google XKCD spacebar heating. It, in short, a bug fix to one person is a breaking change to another and it's, very difficult to, yeah, sometimes it's just like, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, staying the leading orchestration tool um, has been like a crazy challenge. I mean, like the segment of orchestration tool or for a data orchestration tool is very, very crowded. Every day you hear about a new project, a new tool that brings uh, this uh, feature or that feature. So staying on top in this uh, huge competition uh, I think it says uh, a lot about the project and you'll hear uh, about uh, what's coming next. Uh, I think that is like the most challenging uh, thing that we are handling. I think that's a really good point. I don't even know what the quote unquote modern data stack looked like in 2014 or 2015, but um, it was probably one hundredth as big as it is now between all the different tools that are out there. Ash, what about you? I think they've all covered it, so like, mm -hmm. yeah. plus one. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, we'll finish with you here. Yeah, I think, um, honestly, I, I don't know if it is only related to Airflow, but the thing is, um, as we add new and new features on top of the, the project, like obviously there is this growing complexity. Mm -hmm. um, and I think like one of the biggest challenges will be to um, actually keep up with that. Like, because ultimately, uh, like as a data engineer, you don't have that much time to dive in the tool that you need. And so you might miss like 80% of the features that actually will uh, be useful for you. And so I think the idea is, okay, how can you um, make sure that the project grows while you, keep it, while you are able to keep it still simple enough so people can just keep up with the pace mm -hmm. uh, and make sure that the most important features are still uh, you know, well known by the, uh, the users. I think this is where it's gonna be uh, very challenging. Does that make it, how much harder does that make it for you to make your videos? <laughs> it depends on the, on the, on the feature and, and a lot of things, but uh, I would say today is, it's, it's okay. Um, but again, like as we add more and more uh, things uh, on top of Airflow, it's also uh, sometimes a bit uh, of a challenge for sure. Yeah, the line between beginner friendly and exactly. expert friendly. Exactly, exactly. I, I think that Mark, with all the transits or features that we are planning in Alpha, Mark is going to have the work forever, <laughs> to be honest. Yep. So we'll you don't. Put a GoPro on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I want to circle back to something that John said a little earlier, where a lot of companies, um, you know, their business depends on Airflow. If Airflow goes down or Airflow breaks, there's a break and change. Um, people are at risk of losing their jobs, the company is at risk of losing revenue, and so on and so forth. Um, I think that's a pretty heavy responsibility that I think everyone has mentioned through the panel. Um, but I think the community reacts pretty well to that. And one stat I'll share from the Airflow survey from 2023 is that 87% of respondents said that the number of use cases they were using Airflow for increased over time. Mm -hmm. um, if something's not working, you're not going to put more use cases on there. Um, so I'd love to know from this group, like, why do we think that is? Um, Elad, I'll start with you on that side. Yeah, I think uh, our strength is that some of us, at least part of our great community, is like data engineering, data engineers that are building data engineering tools. So we're not just a bunch of people that are developing a software, we're actually, at least I am, using the software that I am developing. I think it brings a lot of value uh, to, the to the project, I mean, I can relate to 
any pain point that uh, this great audience is probably feeling in their day to day. Uh, so the fact that some of us are using the tool that we're developing, I think it brings a lot of confidence uh, into what we present. And I've had many cases that uh, we introduced a feature and people told me, hey, this is exactly what I needed. Uh, how did you even come up with it? I didn't even think about it. And yeah, we thought about it because we're actually using uh, the tool. We're not just developing it and bringing it to others. Uh, I think it's uh, bring a lot of value. It probably relates to why we have uh, so many use cases increasing over time. Yeah, that's a really good point. That user empathy is built into the folks actually building the platform. John, what do you think? So I think it's really a testament to how flexible Airflow is, that it really can adapt itself to any use case. Like we've got a lot of talks this week around Gen AI and large language models. There's talks this afternoon, there's a keynote tomorrow, to, keynote tomorrow on it. You know, that didn't exist when Airflow was started. And the fact that Airflow can just happily do that use case shows how flexible it is. Um, now the flexibility of Airflow is sometimes it's downfall. I'm sure everyone here in the room has nailed in a nail with something other than a hammer before. And people do do that sometimes with Airflow. They sometimes use that as to, to do things it's not entirely supposed to do. But in general, Airflow can bounce back and do really anything. People, you know, we've seen folks using it for, uh, you know, um, DevOps and, and provisioning and especially around and, and tied into um, the Gen AI use cases where you're provisioning a huge fleet of, say, Kubernetes containers and like that. You know, this is all things that were that Airflow was able to do because of its flexibility and its capabilities in there. And then we're also starting to see sort of the beyond scheduling use cases, right? The idea that, well, we're not really tied to a specific moment in time. We're seeing things, all the work around data sets and data where scheduling. There's a number of talks around that. Uh, I think there's some tomorrow afternoon. Um, shameless self-promotion. I have an event-driven thing at, uh, after the morning break around really, again, beyond scheduling on that sort of thing. So, you know, we're really starting to see where the work that the, committed, the community has done to give Airflow its, uh, that flexibility, and then what's more impressive is how the community has latched onto that and just run with it. How many times have you gotten on with a customer or something and they describe what you're, they're doing in Airflow and your response is, wait, you're doing what? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, occasionally it's with shock, but usually it's just impressive. You know, it's just like, wow, I can't believe you did that. That's great. And, and you know, that it's, it's really, I'm always learning something new that somebody's be able to do with Airflow. Rafa? Yeah. So according to the responses in the last year's survey, 86% of the users actually don't customize Airflow. It's actually mind-blowing. Like taking into account uh, all those various use cases and uh, things that people are doing with Airflow, the fact that people don't customize Airflow and use it as it is is actually very impressive. It's a huge uh, uh, signal to the community that uh, we the community does the, the good job. Like Airflow out of the box provides uh, the capabilities that are like useful for uh, majority of the users. They don't need to do anything special. They just use Airflow. It's mind blowing to be honest. Ash? Yeah, the, I mean, we've got what, 1,600 different kind of integrations. That's, you know, what, 115 providers, 1,600 services we integrate with and growing every day. It's just, yeah, if you want to do it and it's even vaguely related to data, you can do it with Airflow. So yeah, it doesn't surprise me that people are used to growing. It's like, yeah. Last but not least. Yeah, I, I'm, I just, um, I don't know what, what conclusion to draw on that, but uh, I was amazed by how many people are still using just like the Python operator, the bash operator, the Kubernetes support operator for everything. Mm -hmm. um, so that reminds me um, a previous talk, I think in the uh, Airflow Summit 2023, that was about operators need to die. That's an open question. Uh, so I don't know, I just, I just find, find that very interesting to see how many people are relying on those operators and only on those operators. Um, and it looks like it's, it's enough, so. Yeah. Do you think that flexibility of all those different operators, like, do you think it's adding to how quickly use cases are getting put onto Airflow? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think like that's, that's actually the beauty of Airflow is like, even if you don't have the operator you need, you can still create your own. Um, and again, like that's, that opens so many possibilities and uh, that's why also I'm very confident in the future of Airflow. Like the sky is the limit basically. Or maybe Python is the limit, but so. Python's the limit. 
I think that's a double-edged sword there. <laughs> cool. Well, I'd love to spend a little time talking about the future, right? I think the results from the Airflow survey this past year were incredibly validating at the strength and breadth of the community. Um, and I think there's a lot of great things going on that will make it so that the strength and size of that is going to be growing into the future, um, especially if we start talking about Airflow 3 and some of the other panels out there. So I'd love to know that, like, from the use cases that are being put on there, um, and John, you started with this, so I'll throw the question back at you a little bit. Um, what additional use cases do you see being put onto Airflow kind of coming in the next couple of months and years? Um, that's kind of in the infancy now, but you really see growing going forward. So really excited. There's some wonderful talks coming up around Airflow 3. Ash mentioned that coming up. There's a lot going on in that. By the way, you all can get involved in that. There are discussions. There's uh, um, the Astronomer hosts a weekly discussion for the developers of it. Uh, there is improvement proposals out there that you can weigh in on. Uh, you know, that the 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 hope of what Airflow 3 can bring, all those things we've been hoping for, trying to get into the current version of Airflow, you know, multi-tenancy and, and um, you know, better isolation around uh, individuals, better granular controls, better performance, more sort of cloud native, cloud ready, more event driven, um, you know, really being able to adapt to those use cases and, and really gain these opportunities to start, you know, not entirely fresh, but start where we can make some of those radical changes that allow us to, you know, uh, be get this pro uh, project ready for the next ten years, and that's really where I, th I think that uh, we're going to see those advancements. Mark, you probably see this more than just about anyone, right? Because you're making those use cases. Uh, you start you're making those videos directly for those use cases. I'm going to give you a chance to shamelessly plug yourself a little bit. What are some of the most recent videos that you've made um, around how to do things with Airflow? There's one in particular that comes to mind. Uh, what? Say that again? Uh, <laughs> you recently made a module on how to do a pretty cool use case with Airflow. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, that was on GNI. Yeah. Um, so, we, yeah, we actually released um, um, a, like, a lot of videos, a, a big module on, on GNI, how can you use GNI with Airflow. Um, but actually, like, ultimately, that proves the point of John, of John. The fact that you have all of those new use cases and you can still use them with Airflow, uh, that proves the point that Airflow is flexible enough so you can, you can just, like, again, like, uh, adapt it to pretty much almost every use case you need uh, in your company. And that's the beauty of Airflow. Again, you don't have what you need. You can create it. You can even contribute to, to the project. Um, and that's also the beauty, just to circle back on the very first question, it is a real open source project, and so anybody can contribute it and make it even better to adapt uh, it for uh, you know, future use cases. Um, so again, like um, Gen AI, MLOps, pretty much everything you want, unless it's streaming, I guess, not yet. <laughs> we'll if see. someone's got a great idea, I'd love stream to exist, <laughs> but I, it's not my wheelhouse, so I don't go in there. I think the survey said 28% of people are using Airflow for MLOps, um, which is a big jump from what it used to be. Um, so something that everyone on the panel has mentioned so far is Airflow 3. Um, I think that there's a lot of great stuff going on there, and I know there's a couple of things that will be talked about at Summit around Airflow 3. Um, but Rafa, what excites you the most about Airflow 3 from uh, kind of where it stands right now? Uh, first, what excites me that the community is actually brave enough to embrace and to start working on the new generation of Airflow, uh, because Airflow 2 is really good. It was a big milestone for Airflow overall, but uh, to be able to meet the needs of current times and future times, we need to evolve uh, uh, Airflow. Uh, we have a session dedicated to roadmap of Airflow 3. We have a also a panel discussion where all the people who are kind of steering the direction of Airflow 3, they will be on stage and you will be able to ask questions. Uh, Airflow 3 is going to bring uh, a lot of features that are uh, like wanted features uh, for a very long time. Like for example, DAG versioning, uh, there will be a huge modernization of Airflow, uh, Airflow UI. On the other hand, uh, there will be new things. For example, Ash is going to cover uh, how Airflow 3 can actually deliver a possibility to, to implement a, a, a Airflow tasks in different languages, not only in Python, but in Go, in whatever language you, you like. I think that this, this is a big gap in Airflow 2, and I'm super happy that we will be able to work on it in case of Airflow uh, 3. There will, be a, there will be also a lot of uh, improvements around security, 
uh, trying to do more stuff through API directly, not uh, not going to the database. So security model overflow is going to be also improved uh, a lot. So for me, these are kind of the most important things. And by the way, Airflow 3 is actually, for me personally, the most important theme of this conference in this year. Um. Yeah, there'll, there'll be a dedicated panel on Airflow 3, I think tomorrow. So there's a lot of great stuff to go there. So I don't want to steal all the thunder, <coughs> uh, but I will ask Ash, over under 100 cups of coffee for Airflow 3. <laughs> <laughs> a day or in total? <laughs> <laughs> However you'd interpret it. Over, way over. Um. So there's one last question I want to ask everyone uh, as it relates to Airflow 3 and just generally the future of Airflow. Um, what feature or use case as far as Airflow 3 goes are you personally most excited about, be it because of uh, you know, what you did in the past or what you see your customers do or what your own personal bias is? So let your biases fly on this one. Mark, we'll, we'll start with you. Um, I think, like, I mean, obviously I'm very excited by Airflow 3 because I was like, very excited about Airflow 2. Um, <laughs> and uh, and I think like it's it's everything related to uh, data awareness. Um, I think that's going to be a big big um, um, step forward with with uh, Airflow three. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited by that. Uh, and I also, I just would like would like to add one thing. Um, like sometimes you can see Airflow is dying, Airflow is over, and so on. I think it's very far away from that. Um, and you know um, the like what we see about the growing number of contributors mm -hmm. just proves the point again. Um, so that's why like, I'm very excited by Airflow 3. I think, uh, I think it's going to be amazing. Proof, the proof is in the numbers on that one. Exactly. Ash? To some extent, it's the kind of like the tossing out of the languages. But if I'm being really honest, it's making execution day not unique removing it. That's been six years in the making of just like slowly chipping away and I'm happy to for that to not be a unique constraint anymore. Um, for no good reason other than it shouldn't be. Does it feel like deep spring clean or something, you're finally getting to that? Yeah, like it's one of the first things like, I want to run. So yeah, it's finally happening, so I'm excited for that one. Rafa, what about you? Yeah, there are so many cool things Airflow 3 is going to bring. It's very hard to decide which is the most important one for me. Uh, maybe one thing that we didn't mention, we will be uh, also improving the uh, scheduling of the tasks uh, and there will be a feature uh, to switch scheduler to trigger DAGs uh, in kind of even driven fashion instead of like constantly, uh, uh, constant loop that uh, uh, analyzes the DAGs and uh, schedules them. There will be an, a mode to actually to switch to more like even driven DAG parsing and uh, scheduling. So this will be interesting feature. Some of you might be interested in it. You know, for me, maybe not specifically Airflow 3, but the future of Airflow in general, I'm most excited about the people in this room. You know, there are over 600 people that came here. Now, some of you just took BART. We're not going to entirely discount that as, as being a large, you know, which has its own stress. I realize that. But, you know, people came from all over the world to come to this event, to what Mark said. Airflow is a long way from dying. It's growing every year over year. You know, we have people that are, are, you know, the number the number and quality of talks we're having this week with the people that are bringing their expertise and sharing it with the community, the people that are using Airflow every day and showing how they're using it. Um, you know, that's, that's the community that's driving Airflow. That's what's driving Airflow 3 work. That's what's driving the growth of the project. And, and that's what really makes me excited about it. Yeah, I think for me, what I'm most exciting about Looking forward is uh, the work that we're doing around the data sets. Um, I think it's uh, very exciting. I mean, when we're talking about the Airflow user, it's not necessarily the person who deploy Airflow and the DAG author are not necessarily the same person. Uh, so I'm most excited about the work and the features that we bring to uh, DAG authors. And there are a lot uh, to look forward uh, in that area. Um, yeah, so all the new features and enhancements that are coming to data sets. Uh, it's very promising. Uh, you'll hear a lot about it in this conference. Yeah, I really like your answer because I think you bring up a really good point between all the different personas involved. And I think every persona involved really does benefit from data awareness, right? And data sets and other ways that Airflow gives you more direct abstraction to the data it's moving. Giving, going around on the mic, but let's give a quick shout out to Maxime, who's in the crowd somewhere, uh, the creator of Airflow. Maxime, you stand up? All right, thank you very much. And special thank you to everyone on stage. 
uh, for making Airflow, most of you, a plug and play uh, for most of the platforms that we're used to. So thank you for that. Uh, I think my question is general, but I'll probably want to direct it to, uh, to Mark. In, uh, I'm a fan of your Thursday uh, polls. And in one of the polls, you made uh, a question that says, uh, what do people use Airflow for? And I think one of the answers was, uh, no, Airflow is just an orchestrator. And about 72% of the respondents kind of chose that answer. I want to ask you now, do you, what do you see about the future of Airflow in terms of data engineering uh, as, as a whole? Do you think Airflow would kind of encroach into more of the data engineering practices, the way people do ETL, and rather than using other tools in combination with Airflow, Airflow would actually take care of most of those heavy lifting. And uh, do you see that in the future? That's it, thank you. Well, um, that's a tough question. Um, I think um, I think if I remember well this poll, I think like most of the people said that they use Airflow only for orchestrating. Um, well, because obviously it's the best at doing that. Um, so this is a good sign, but also I think it was more related to, hey, should I process my data in Airflow, you know, all of that um, uh, stuff. I think like moving forward, and again, I'm, I'm uh, relying on you, Ash, and, and others. Um, like, I think like moving forward Airflow, and actually it's already the case, like you can do way more than just orchestrating your tasks with Airflow. Um, actually, you can already process the data uh, within your task. You just need to be careful on a few things, obviously. Um, but I think like Airflow is already more than just an orchestrator. And I think in the future, it will be, again, more than just an orchestrator because of all of those new concepts that will come around with uh, Airflow 3. Um, and that's why like, I'm very confident. Um, Airflow is, in my opinion, and I'm not biased, uh, the best orchestrator. Um, but I think, like, again, the fact that it is able to adapt on those new use cases that we already see proves the point. All right? like, you want to use it for Genera, you can do it. You want to use it for MLOps, you can do it. You want to use it for ELT or ETL, whatever, you can do it as well. Um, and, um, and again, like, I think... Um, it's an orchestrator, yes, but I think moving forward, it's going to be way more than that, um, and I'm very confident in, in this path. But um. for sure, uh, we, uh, at least uh, from the cloud composer perspective, we see that people are using uh, Airflow not only for orchestration but also for compute. So LM ops, uh, training models, uh, doing any kind of computations is always mixed with uh, task orchestration. So. For me, Airflow at this point is orchestration plus compute. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Airflow is evolving even as, so you mentioned ETL, right? So there's also this whole zero ETL type things moving now where your data is already where you need it to be. But there still has to be something that tells you what to do with it. Just because the data is there, there has to be, you have to have some way of describing what the purpose is for all this stuff. And that's what Airflow can do. If you move from, well, I used to have to call these SQL queries and now I just call to do this other thing. Airflow is able to evolve to that. Airflow is able to do all that sort of stuff right out of the box. And, you know, that's that, that again, that level of flexibility and that level of capability that, you know, allowing Airflow to move as the technology moves uh, is, you know, is keeping that relevant. Yeah, it's, it, it's a dichotomy that Airflow is like, it's a general purpose scheduler. It doesn't actually care about the data. Um, I've got this crazy idea in my head that I haven't written down because I don't want anyone to implement it about how Airflow CI could run in Airflow. Um, but I don't want to write to CI systems, so don't ever do that. But on the other side, if Airflow knows about the data, it can probably do a better job. So it's like, okay, well, let's, 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 how do we balance these and try and do both at the same time? Yeah. Oh. Hi. Uh, Josh Demarski, Amazon. Uh, question about kind of Airflow started off as a, open source, scrappy-ish project, and it really seems to be maturing into a much more stable uh, <laughs> project. That, that, was, that was scrappy with an S, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Just making uh, sure. Definitely. No, in, in great ways. Uh, I guess the question is just to the, the panel. Can you speak more about your thoughts on how Airflow is getting, quote unquote, more professional where we have summits, we have managed service offerings, 
and we have a lot more, you know, more roles than just software and data engineers getting involved. We have product managers, we have community outreach, things like that. Um, wondering if any thoughts on that. Thanks. It, it's, it's great. I mean, as a programmer, I, I don't have to care about that. And someone else can do all that stuff, and I can just code. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I think we, we touched on it earlier about how critical Airflow has come to people's businesses. Raj mentioned it as well. Like, you know, and, and the bit of a burden that that comes with it, but that also drives the investment and the effort, right? It drives, as you mentioned, things like product managers, right? I'm a product manager. We, we do bring value to this, trust me. I, I do, we, we, you know, it is, uh, I know the developers in the room maybe don't agree with that, but I assure you we do bring, <laughs> bring help to this. But understanding, you know, bringing people in that are the voice of the user, right? The folks, you know, that sort of stuff. You have engineering managers and things like that that are, are devoted that, and, and, you know, you also mentioned the managed services. You know, uh, obviously I represent one. We all, we all have uh, uh, represent managed services here. Um, you know, that gives the users the confidence to adopt it. And as those users grab that confidence to adopt it, their users, they're the, they're, they start to contribute to the project. There's a reason why Airflow has 3,000 contributors. I think Spark is at 2,000, 2,200, something like that. Like it's way behind. Um, it's because it's that, the open nature of it. As it becomes more adopted and more trusted, then more people invest in it and it becomes more adopted and more trusted. And it's that flywheel that keeps that, that, that creates that allows um, you know, businesses that have, you know, millions of dollars potentially riding on the data that Airflow is, is, is orchestrating, the confidence to, to adopt the platform and continue its evolution. Yeah, well, when it comes to, like, your, your statement about the early days of uh, Airflow, uh, I wouldn't uh, call, uh, like, it scrappy and so on, but in general, over time, you definitely can see improvement and uh, higher quality in Airflow. So, a lot already mentioned uh, system tests, uh, so those system tests are making sure that providers are working fine. A uh, couple of years ago, we separated Airflow Core from providers, so there is a, a clear boundary what, uh, between the what is provider and what is the core Airflow functionality. Yarek is going uh, to talk about security. Uh, Apache Airflow at this point is probably the most uh, um, secure like uh, pro, um, software within uh, Apache Software Foundation. Our uh, processes for addressing security issues in Airflow are really are uh, mature and with them going, they, they even will be more mature. Uh, uh, we are also working on um, uh, testing uh, Airflow software from the performance standpoint. So uh, those performance tests will be measuring uh, uh, any kind of uh, possibility of regressions as a result of code changes. So we'll be able to see if performance uh, of Airflow uh, from release to release deteriorates or improves. So in general, we invest a lot into making uh, Airflow like, uh, of, uh, like a high quality software. Of course, we can do more, so. Yeah, I'll also add to that, that like the community, like the people who develop Airflow, they're more than just developers. I mean, we have product managers and we have security experts, we have solution architects, we have like people from every profession that you can imagine that are involved in the project and bring their own uh, unique value. Uh, and I think this is also help us to deliver a, a better product, like we get different point of views and different angles about uh, uh, what we do and feedback. Uh, and I invite you all to contribute and help us to direct uh, the project to um, whatever it needs to go. I mean, we grow with you. Uh, we want to stay on top of what we actually uh, want to do. I mean, we have things in, uh, that we mind, that we imagine. Uh, but we, we we really like if you also uh, participate uh, in the discussions, in the issues, on the PRs, comment. I mean, let us know what you think uh, about what we do, uh, and we will change accordingly. Yeah, absolutely. Like, contributing is not just writing code, right? Contributing every issue you open is a contribution to the project. Every comment you make on a mailing list is a contribution of the project. And everyone in the room can do that, bring their own skill, their own perspective, their own needs, and make the project better. And docs PRs are the best PRs. Write it down, it's great, we love it. Um, particularly as a developer, I'm terrible at writing things down, so if someone else can do it for me, yes please. <laughs> Hi folks, uh, my name is Madison and I'm a staff data engineer at Automatic. 
uh, shameless plug for the panel on Airflow 3, which is going to be on Thursday, if folks want to hear more about that. But I have been using Airflow since 2017 as well, across three different jobs and for a bunch of like, uh, like side projects and personal projects. And I keep finding like, oh, I have this thing I want to do. I want to do it in Airflow. So I'm curious for you all, do any of you run Airflow for personal uh, code or side projects or things that you're running outside of work? Yeah, I can, I can actually, um, and that's funny because I started to do that um, a few, few weeks ago. Um, so I'm actually using Airflow to pull out the data from my Udemy courses um, and also like the questions that I have um, to apply, like um, um, to be able to, well, first thing first, categorize the reviews um, and also give an, insert, an answer to uh, those reviews uh, by reaching out to the people on LinkedIn directly. Uh, and I'm doing all of that on, on using Airflow. Uh, another also uh, use case that I'm trying to achieve right now is I have like many, many questions every day um, on those uh, courses. And obviously it's a bit hard for me to answer all of those. Um, and for example, using um, um, LLM and so on to at least have a, a, you know, a starting point to answer those questions uh, is something that I'm already doing as well with, uh, with, with Airflow. So I'm actually, Truly using Airflow uh, as a, uh, on my uh, on my um, in my in my personal projects, uh, and yeah, so far it's been uh, it's been great. So that's what I'm doing. At least I have use case for that. For me, I don't I don't know if it counts as being outside of work, but um, you know I love tinkering with Airflow. I love pushing it, like to see what it does and see what it doesn't do. Uh, uh, the MWA engineering team counts on me to break Airflow all the time. They love they love the fact that I go and kick the tires and make it do unnatural things. And you know that's that's I, that's how I learn how it really works and how you know it, how it really functions. So um, you know I've done some small non you know non work things with it, but that's more of the you know it, it's less about not being work and more about it not having a focused goal of Airflow and more of a let's see what it, can it do this let's try that oh did you know you could do that no okay well that's great and that's sort of how you can really learn. And I encourage folks. To, See what it can do. Try think of something crazy and see if it works or not. You know, worst that can happen is maybe you have to start up a new Docker container. So, I personally don't use uh, Airflow in my private life, but on the other hand, uh, what I can say that within Google and even Alphabet, there are a lot of teams using Airflow for various things, and they are relying on Airflow uh, in their critical uh, uh, production rollouts or uh, uh, business processes. Uh, you, you would be amazed sometimes, like I cannot unfortunately mention the names of the teams or companies within Alphabet using Airflow, but there are a lot of them and you would be surprised. Mm -hmm.